In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, nice to be here with you, Cain. Okay. This we're doing. Um, we said First Kings chapter twenty. So um, <clears throat> we're continuing with the Hezekiah, King Hezekiah. Okay, one of the great kings in Judah, and. Uh, Anyone can recap or the highlights from last time? Second Kings, yeah. Second Kings chapter 20. Anyone? Give us a little bit. Anything that uh, stood up for you from last time? The letters on the altar. Yeah. Yes. So he spread the paper, the letters uh, of uh, King Sankarib uh, on the altar to say to God, these words are against you, actually. And you deal with it as you see fit. Right. And um, when it came to the battle, we noticed that. Um, the angel of the Lord came and, you know, destroyed so much of the army and they fled. Right. So that's where we um, kind of stopped there. Right. Second King 19. Yeah. Uh, and then we saw how the Lord was speaking in, in kind of uh, a song. Uh, and then now we're continuing into uh, chapter 20, a different look at the life of Hezekiah. In, in those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And uh, Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, thus says the Lord. Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Not he was only sick and near death, but now he has what a confirmation from a prophet that he's going to die. Okay. And when he said, set your house in order, that means see who's going to take over from you. Okay, because you're going to die. And at that time, he was still young. and. Um, Actually, he, he didn't have uh, a son. Uh, he got a son after that, as we're going to see. So um, that was a lot of news to take. In verse 2, then he turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray how I have walked before you in truth and with loyal heart and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly, right? It makes you wonder, like such a good man, like, why is he so afraid of death, right? What do you think? Why was he like so bitter about this? Like today, if 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 I get a prophet comes and tells me like you're about to die, set your house, you know, in New Testament, like I'm happy. Okay, I'm going to paradise, and let me repent. I have time, even if it's a couple of days, I have time to repent, right? But in this case, he's a good man, right? And the Lord praised him in the previous chapter, right? And even himself, he's saying to the Lord, look, I've done good. I've done all what you asked me, right? So like, what's going on? So why do you think? Why, why, why is he so um, distressed about death? Uh, mm. 
Uh, yes. So. Um, wanted to live to help. Um, Parsh, yeah, I won't say that because God already gave him victory. Did you say he was praying for his life? Is that what you said before? There is part of it, yes. Like maybe he felt like um, he was like doing his part with God. Mm -hmm. And so like he, he still had something to live for. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe God didn't answer his prayer. So he was kind of like, Mm. Wait, is that it? Like, yeah. I'm just gonna like end my life now. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's it. You're gonna end up end my life now. Mm, partially, yes. A big part of it. Are you just gonna end up my life now? Uh remember now, this is in the old testament. And in the old testament, there is a lot of emphasis on if you do good, you should live long. Right? Honor your father and mother, right? That your that may your days be increased on earth, right? So the fact that someone dies just like that at a young age, not in war, is oh. like huh? oh. we're talking about like uh, near the 40, like 39, 40 years old, right? Um, and that's young. So to him, that's distress. That's to, to everyone around him will look and to the mindset and the culture mindset is like, uh, you've done something not pleasing to God. And that's a, a reason for you to die so early in your uh, age, right? So this is very important. And that's important to understand the culture. And then you understand where this guy is coming from. And of course, the second reason is that, uh, in those days before Christ, anyone dies, go to Hades, right? Did they know that? Yes. Because in many of the Psalms, they say, you do not leave my soul, Masam, for example, uh, in, in Hades, right? They know where they're going. There is no another option. And they can also bring them in some Yes, they knew that the Messiah is coming and the Messiah is going to uh, bring victory. The Messiah is actually also going to bring them to life. Right? And until today, uh, actually, if you come with us one day to Jerusalem, you find that they, uh, they, they try to, until to, like, uh, bury as close as possible to the gates of Jerusalem. Because they still believe that the Messiah will come one day and, and enter Jerusalem. And as he enters Jerusalem, he will bring people back to life. So they try to uh, bury as close as possible. Meaning that those who are closer will get life first. Kind of, right? Uh, of course, that mentality changed in Christianity. It's going to happen. Hmm? That did happen. Yes. But people went back again and, and died. Yeah, they went into the city just to show that these are the people that they were dead. So that's like a sign that the Messiah has come. Right? That's one of the things, right? Many of the dead, many of the dead that were in the tombs, the tombs were opened and many of the dead that were in there entered into the city. Not all of them. But it was like just a sign to say that this is the Messiah. Okay. But this is a big reason for him to be, uh, to be in distress. Right. Does that make sense? Okay. So we continue 2 King chapter 20 and verse 3. We, we, we read verse 3. Verse 4. And it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying. So Isaiah gave the message and started walking and he just uh, turned his face toward the wall. Hezekiah and um, many of um, 
uh, the scholars, they say that the wall probably was a wall that towards the temple of Jerusalem. That's why he turned his face towards the wall, because this is the wall that was in his house that was towards the temple. That's why, if you're wondering why the wall. Um, and he cried to the Lord, and the Lord heard him. Okay. In a bit, we're going to actually, this story is repeated in... Um, in uh, second chronicles and also repeated in isaiah because the prophet who delivered the message is isaiah so he also recorded that message and we can read some different uh, details more details so god told isaiah return and tell hezekiah the leader of my people you notice that now he's telling him the leader of my people so he acknowledges Hezekiah as a leader, and he acknowledges the people as his people. This is a big thing uh, for a prophet to, to hear. Thus says the Lord God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord. Such a beautiful uh, uh, verse, right? I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears, right? Which means that the Lord hears our prayers. The Lord sees our tears. And prayers without tears, it does not seem to be a valid. <laughs> Tears does not have to be the, the, the tears, the physical one, but the tears of the heart that I'm weeping over my sins, right? So the Lord told him, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord. What does the third day remind you of? Yeah. Resurrection. So it gives us, uh, an idea that Hezekiah, because he's such a good person, actually he got to experience resurrection, right? After three days, you will go up to the house of the Lord. And I will add your days to your, to your days, 15 years, 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. Okay. Then Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. So then took and laid it on the boil and he recovered. Okay. It seems that this is one of uh, the ways that they used to kind of like use in medicine. So God is also still allowing the type of medicine that they use. And it seems like as we're going to read here or switch to Isaiah, read the same story. You're going to notice that like his sickness is kind of has to do with the body. And it was something that was obvious, like some um, secretions of the body and the kind of uh, some wounds. Right. So that's why that's the type of medicine. Um, but you notice something. What did he ask for? What did um, Hezekiah ask for when he prayed and cried? Uh, not to die. As <laughs> simple as that. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are thinking. And it's not to die. That's all. <laughs> But look what the Lord gave him. The Lord gave him three things. He asked for one thing. God gave him three things. God gave him said, okay, so I'm not going to allow you to die. I'm going to even give you 15 years on top of that. He also like didn't, like because Isaiah came into his tent, like you're going to die. Like that's like a prophet. Like, so his word is like, mm -hmm. it's as if it's God's will. But I think, What's nice about Hezekiah is that he like treated God like his father. Mm -hmm. and kind of had a conversation Beautiful. with him, like, hey, I don't yeah. really agree with you. Like, yeah, I want 
like if it's your will like please take this from yeah me. so I, I really like that beautiful yes that's another thing we were gonna come and we're gonna see it repeated towards the end of the chapter also is that Hezekiah like does not really like he goes with God you want this fine but if you want to extend my life it would be good but you know what? Let it be according to your will, God. I'm fine with it. Right? So that's a beautiful thing. And it shows the true uh, personality of King Hezekiah that he believes that God, as long as he's good to God, no matter what happens, it will always turn out for his own good and for God's glory. Okay? So this is very important in his personality. So we find that he gave him life, extended his life by 15 years. And then he gave him another two things. He told him, I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. Right? Back to your point, John. Right? So he's going to give him also victory. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. Not only deliver him and give him victory, but also he's going to defend. Nobody else is going to uh, try to come an attack then isaiah we said took the lump of figs um verse eight and hezekiah said to isaiah what is the sign that the lord will heal me and that i shall go up to the house of the lord in the third day so this guy like mariam is saying like such a cool guy like okay so show me a sign yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in verse seven it says that he recovered why is he asking for the uh, The sign that he will live for 15 years. All right, 15 years. Um, then he asked for the sign. Then Isaiah said, this is the sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing which he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward? 10 degrees or go backward 10 degrees so kind of like giving him an option would you like the the, the shadow you know uh, in back in the days i think we saw it uh, yeah the dial right the sundial so he said do you want the dial to go 10 degrees forward or 10 degrees backward right and of course as humans it makes what sense to go forward to go forward 10 degrees, right? Uh, so he asked him this question. Then Hezekiah answered, it's an easy thing for the shadow to go 10 down, 10 degrees. No, but let the shadow go backward 10 degrees, okay? It, it's easy, it's logical that the shadow will just go a little bit forward 10 degrees, but he said, no, let it go back. Uh, 10 degrees so Isaiah the prophet cried out to the Lord and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it had gone down on the sundial of Ahaz Ahaz is the king that set it up okay so God did not just you know uh, uh, stop time God pushed time backward okay 10 degrees in dial. And maybe that was yani, one of the ways of the sun. Um, what do you call it now? Um, uh, uh, huh? eclipse. Yeah, eclipse. So you can also one kind, maybe. So in that way, God answered his prayers. And that's God like, you know, for, for the sake of my children. I'm willing to do so much. I can give you more than what you ask for. Right? St. Paul, when he says, the Lord who gives more than what we ask, the Lord who provide in abundance. Um, just, okay. So, um, we stopped at verse 11. Any, any, any comments, questions regarding this 15 years? 
Yeah, he knew that he's gonna die 15 years after. That. Yeah, yeah, he will count 15 years exact from that day on. Yes. <laughs> um, if you want, we can just pause here a little bit. Okay, and we can go to uh, flip quickly to I think it's uh... <clears throat> I know um Okay, let's go to Isaiah chapter 38. Okay. Um, and we're, we're going to come back really quick. Uh, in, those, in those days, I'm going to just read quickly. It's the same story, but in different from different perspective. Uh, in those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, thus says the Lord, set your house in order for you shall die and not live. And Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord and said, remember now, O Lord, I pray how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have gone and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. And this is the sign to you. You notice that here, the details for like how he gave him an option is not there. Um, and uh, this is the sign to you from the Lord that the Lord will do this thing which he has spoken. Behold, I will bring the shadow on the sundial which has gone down with the sun on the sundial of a house 10 degrees backward. So the sun returned 10 degrees on the dial by which it had gone down. This is the writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and had recovered from his sickness. So this is the part that in addition. So, and this prayer, this prayer of Hezekiah, we read it in the church on a, a bright Saturday. At the beginning, there are multiple prayers and all those prayers, right? Uh, it's so good. It, it talks about the victory and overcoming death. So, and one of the stories is like Susanna, who also was beautiful and was delivered from death. And one of the prayers is this, Hezekiah's prayer, because he was delivered from death and he symbolizes Christ. Such a beautiful prayer. Hmm? It's, it's very short. Yeah. Um, but if you know, see, when you know the stories and when it comes to Saturday, uh, bright Saturday, then when you read that prayer, it, you know, all the background where this is happening and how, uh, why this is put there. So this is what he says. Uh, in the prime of my life, we were talking about this in the prime of my life. I shall go to the gates of Sheol, Hades. I am deprived of a reminder of my years, I said. I shall not see, yeah. The Lord in the land of the living, I shall observe man no more among the inhabitants of the world. My lifespan is gone, taken from me like a shepherd's tent. I have cut off my life like a weaver. He cuts me off from the loom. From day until night, you make an end of me. I have considered until morning, like a lion. So he breaks all my bones. From day until night, you make an end of me, like a crane or a shallow. 
So I chatter, I mourn like a dove. My eyes fail from looking upward. O oh Lord, I am oppressed, undertake for me. What shall I say? He has both spoken to me and he himself has done it. I shall walk carefully all my years in the bitterness of my soul. O oh Lord, by these things men live and in all these things in life of my spirit. So you will restore me and make me live. Imagine you're sitting there on bright Saturday in, at night, half asleep, half awake, and you're reading this and you just finished Good Friday and you're reading this and going into uh, uh, the resurrection. It's beautiful. O oh Lord, by these things men live and in these things in life of my spirit, so you will restore me and make me live. Indeed, it was for my own peace that I had great bitterness. But you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption. For you have cast all my sins behind your back. For Sheol cannot thank you. Death cannot praise you. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your truth. The living, the living man, he shall praise you as I do this day. The father shall make known your truth to the children. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing my songs with stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. Now Isaiah had said, let them take a lump of figs and apply it, apply it as a poultice uh, on the boil and he shall recover. And Hezekiah had said, what is the sign that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? And we know the sign, right? So uh, when, when God does good in our lives, we shall praise his name. We shall give thank to him, just like what Hezekiah did, okay? Now the question, the question. Does that mean I can, like, the prayer changes God's, does prayer changes God's will or changes God's plan? Right? It, it comes very good. Yeah. No, it does not change God's will. So what, what was this? God said, you're going to die. So he turned and he cried and he prayed. And then God said, okay, you're going to live another 15 years. So what happened? Huh? Huh? Yeah. I don't think God was actually going to make him go through with it, regardless, even if he didn't want to. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like I guess the same thing. Right? Okay. It's like God wants to see what, how you're going to react. But, okay. You know. I think, I think you can change God's will. It doesn't change that God knows what's going to happen. So, like, there's a difference between God's knowledge and God's, like, He's like alive and active in your life. Like, Mm -hmm. um so i was on a missionary trip in kenya like a month ago yeah and... uh, just a second online can you hear mario those online can you hear mario yes we can yeah okay yeah. go ahead um, yeah yeah and actually the bishop there answered this question because i used to always think like oh like what's the point of praying like if it's god's will it's god's will um but he said that like your prayers have an active effect on how God responds in your life and that there's many examples in the Bible. Like, I didn't know about this one, this mm -hmm. one but um, with um, Elijah and the widow. And yeah. he basically told God, like, you made a mistake. And God went back and he, like, changed his will. And there's, like, so many other examples in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, with the son? With the son. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The son, Elijah and Elisha. Oh, yes, yes. Elijah, widow. okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then when you read through like other stories in the Bible, like 
a lot of times like people pray, pray, pray for things. Mm. And clearly it's not God's will in their life. And then God says, I've heard your prayer. And so let I've seen your fears. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Uh, there was a comment on uh, here. Uh, let me see. Uh, yes, he did. You know, you said, yes, he did. What do you mean? Like, yes, he changed. God changed his mind. Uh, yes, he changed his will, yeah, because he was willing for uh -huh. for him to die, but after prayer, he changed his mind, I guess. Okay. There you go, guys. We have another if, opinion. If it's anything no, no. else, so uh, so there is no point from prayer, like Mariam said. Huh. So God is going to do it, is going to do it, okay. Yeah, you're going to say? <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah he doesn't change his mind yeah yeah uh-huh so good yes in prayer we are participating in his will very good Adjusting? Uh -huh. Adjusting in a sense of um, if, it, if we want something and we pray about it and then we see what the things are doing, what is Okay, can you say that again? Just uh, I think maybe the online team, they don't. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, the whole thing? No, just the last part. Okay. I think, um, in my humble opinion, <laughs> um, I think that um, prayer prayer is more of not for God, but for us to participate in his will. Yeah. And I think also prayer, it's not necessarily, it changes the plan, but it more gives us that comfort we need to understand what the will is or to maybe mm -hmm. understand the bigger picture or to see things in different perspectives nice yeah like, you know like mm -hmm. when you ask for things you don't necessarily see the bigger picture and then you pray and you like, yeah very good thank you uh you were gonna add something mike okay you're gonna add something john okay uh there was something beautiful uh that was said actually from wednesday right abuna abuna yusuf said something beautiful uh he said uh he said, um, yes, 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 go ahead. He said that your prayer has an effect in a way that uh, God envisions so many scenarios for you. And then if he sees that you are mm -hmm. um, giving or putting the effort into, into wanting something and appealing for it and um, appealing yes. for it and um, reaching out to God for it, then that. Uh, he has this scenario of this possibility where he could uh, grant it to you. Very good. Yes. So uh, that, that was so beautiful, Abuna, when he said prayer is actually a condition for God's will to be fulfilled. Right. And in this case, God said, you're going to die. Unless you pray, I'm going to lift up this. Okay. So you're going to find so much. In our lives and this is also what like so prayer makes us participants in god's will in god's plan right so and prayer is a condition for god's will in my life right uh so that's a beautiful thing so god actually did not change his mind but you want to think about it in a different way maybe people will disagree with this but I will, you're going to die unless you repent and pray to me, then uh, you will live. Okay, you get the point? Like, you know, it's, it's a conditional God's will. Otherwise, it will be me. It, it will be on me. If I don't pray, I don't repent. Or also what Maria said here, 
I'm gonna pray and it's gonna go ahead, then I understand God's will better. Okay. Very good. Any follow up from online? Yeah. I'm not sorry. I feel this is uh, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Which part? At what part? Uh, we got that if you pray, uh, it's conditional. It's a conditional. Which part? Uh, when Isaiah was just walking out, uh -huh. God right away told him, "No, go back." He did exactly what I was expecting him to do. That's how you get it. Uh, right? And when we read Isaiah, the praise of uh, of Hezekiah also, when we read the, the praise of Hezekiah in, in Isaiah, also he talks about that. He said, like, I'm oppressed and everything, but what shall I say? He has both spoken to me. Right, and everything is is gonna go. Right, uh, in verse seventeen, um, you know, <clears throat> when he says, "Like the Lord was ready to save me," you you find that in verse twenty. The Lord okay. was ready to save me. That means I'm ready to save you. Can you please pray? Can you please repent? Are you going to change your heart? Right? Just like the 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 thief on the uh, on the cross, right? It's the same thing happening, but the reaction of one got him to hate us and the reaction of another or the response of the other got him to paradise. So God is like there, I'm waiting for you. Okay, you see me on the cross. Are you going to pray? Are you going to ask? I'm waiting for you. It's up to you. You get the point? Mm, okay, I, I need to go back and read it. Thank you, Bonnie. But you find it in Isaiah chapter 38, verse 20, when he said, okay. the Lord was ready to save me. Okay. Hmm? Who? No, the prayer uh, fulfill God's uh, promise, fulfill God's uh, plan in my life. Mm? Yes. What? What's the question? God does not change his mind. Okay. But his plan is always conditional. But how many times now you've we've been reading uh, Second Kings and First Kings, and always he says, "If you truly follow me, I will save you and fortify your city, and no nation will take over you." But the minute you start disobeying me, surely you can trust assured that I'm gonna bring not not let you in the hands of the enemy no i'm gonna bring the enemies to attack you how many times we read we went through this uh, scenario so this again proves uh, uh the point that god is there waiting for me to uh kind of like activate his 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 promise to me by my uh by my uh steps by my doing Okay. I also think though sometimes it's like it's our problem too. Like our mm -hmm. problem is like if I pray, I'm gonna change God's will, or if I don't pray, God's just gonna do whatever He wants. So like we're envisioning God the way we envision other people. Like I'm gonna ask for something and I'm gonna see if it's a yes or a no. Versus, yeah. Versus with God, like like you mentioned, like you're not really changing his will, but you are you are like you're in a conversation with him. Like and you're saying like Hezekiah was like. I've been good to you all, all the years of my life. Like I've been faithful to you. Like hear me and like, listen to me. I'm upset. Mm -hmm. He's like a father, like a father and a son. He's not just going to leave him crying, you know? Yes. So there is, there's always an answer. Um, and, and I think sometimes we see it as we're changing God's will, but it's more of like an active relationship. With God. Yeah. Very good. So in, in, in other, in other uh, words, for example, like if I pray, 
uh, and something like this, right? And God would say me maybe like in in a different case, like give me this uh, school, right? And God, okay, I bless, let it be, okay? To me, my prayer, making God's plan in my life come true and it's blessed. Or the other side where I pray and I don't get into this school, right? Also, I'm making God's plan in my life coming true, right? It's about that faith and that trust in God that he will do the right thing time and save. Yes. Because, like, we, also have free will. we have free will. So it's not like we're changing his mind. It's like he has blessings for us. Do you want to come and get it or not? Exactly. So that's, that's, I think that's very hard. Excellent. Very good. You guys, huh? what is that? Did you answer yeah, good Yeah, 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 yeah. No, very good. Guys, glad that I threw this question on you guys. <laughs> okay, very good. How oh, what time is it now? Oh, we we'll quick. We can finish the last part. So the amazing Hezekiah now, we're going to see something maybe not going to like. But, <laughs> but you're going to see this point exactly, exactly what I'm talking about in the next part, the last part of this chapter. Look what happens. Um, then, um, then Isaiah, the prophet went to King, sorry, uh, verse 12. So back, we're back to second King chapter 20, verse 12. At that time, Berodak, Baldan, the son of Baldan, the king of Babylon, sent leaders and present to Hezekiah, for he heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah was attentive to them and showed them all the house of his treasures, the silver and the gold, the spices and the precious ointment and all his armory, all that was found among his treasures. There was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. This is like, you know, uh, you know, today, like, um, uh, Putin will send some, uh, you know, um, Russia will send some messengers to the United States and say, hey, uh, just saying, uh, like you are about to die, but God blessed you. It's kind of uh, that. And then you take them and show them uh, all the research departments and all the, you know, NASA research uh, areas and you give them a very a grand tour of all the facilities right it's kind of like that so what happens then isaiah the prophet went into king hezekiah and said to him what the what did these men say and from where did they come to you so hezekiah said they come from a far country from babylon basically no harm done, you know. These are so far. Like, they're 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 a very far nation. They're not gonna use this against me whatsoever. So chill. But then, um, uh, from Babylon, and he said, "What have they seen in your house?" So Hezekiah answered, "They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them." Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord, and they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will uh, beget you see this is you will beget right he did not have a son yet right and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of babylon and of course we know about daniel and the exile and everything but at the time this was news to hezekiah so hezekiah said to isaiah 
And this is the beauty that we were talking about, about this beautiful person. The word of the Lord, which you have spoken, is good. <laughs> Someone is telling you, like, you know, the, the people that you showed them everything, they're going to come and they're going to destroy, they're going to steal, they're going to take away, they're going to, like, do, uh, like, bad things. And then he says, the word of the Lord is good. This is what God, you know, judging and uh, sensing, fine. He's good. And he knows better than me. So I'm not going to be distressed. Sure. For he said, will there be, will there not be peace and truth at least in my days? And a little bit, uh, at least there is peace uh, during my times until I die and then let it... <laughs> <laughs> did you guys get that okay now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah all his might and how he made a pool and tunnel and brought water into the city are they not written into the book of chronicles of the kings of Judah so Hezekiah rested with his fathers then Manasseh his son reigned in his place Manasseh yes Manasseh has a prayer and that's what we will hopefully discover and go through the next couple of times. Okay. So this concludes Hezekiah. But if we have a couple of uh, minutes here, you want to slip to uh, Isaiah chapter 39 really quick, just to conclude that part from Isaiah's perspective. At that time, it's the same. Uh, Murdoch, Baldan, the son of Baldan, the king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that he had been sick and had recovered. And Hezekiah was pleased with them and showed them the house of his treasure, his silver, gold, uh, spices, and precious ointment, and all his armory and all that was found among the treasures. There was nothing in the house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and said to him, what did these men say? From where did they come to you? And Hezekiah said, they came to me from a far country from Babylon. And he said, what have they seen in your house? So Hezekiah answered, they have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers has accumulated until the day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will beget. And they shall be eunuchs uh, in the palace of the king of Babylon. So Hezekiah said to Isaiah, the word of the Lord, which you have spoken is good. For he said, at least there will be peace and truth in my days. Okay. Um, it's important when I'm in a good relationship with God. When everything is going good in my life, that I keep that to myself. Sometimes we like we we kind of like go ahead of ourselves and we start showing people around, like, ah, look what I'm doing, look what I've got, look what God did to me, look how God is so good to me, look what I'm doing, what I'm serving, what I'm uh, so no, I need to be careful. I cannot just show everything in front of others. The Song of Songs in chapter 4, verse 12. He says, a garden enclosed is my sister. That means what, my beloved? So God is talking to the, the, the human soul saying, a garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. You are mine. I'm yours. So there has to be kind of a like, uh, more like an intimate thing between me and God that nobody knows except maybe my father of confession. That's it. A spring shot up, a fountain sealed. You know, maybe people will see the water that's coming out, but they never get to see where the fountain is. Okay, so this is very important. You found it? Uh, Songs chapter 4, verse 12. Verse 12. You found it? Yeah. 
Uh, also, St. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, he says, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Be careful. If you're standing and you're doing well, going good, don't be puffed up. Don't be prideful, right? Don't boast about what you have acquired, what you're doing with God. Because lest he fall, okay? And remember how many times I said, pray your hardest at your highest. Pray your hardest at your strongest or at your highest, okay? So it's very important to, you know, keep that heat in. The minute you open, you know, the oven and leave it open, the heat will escape. But there has to be that intimacy between me and God, right? That is closed at all times. So next time we're going to talk about Manasseh. Another great also story coming up. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> um, any questions before we uh, leave?